Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Thursday, March 21st, 2024. I hope we are in good spirit today. I pray that as we go throughout the day that the Lord will continue to be with us. And as you continue to look to him, I pray that he will show you favor and bless you. Our reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 6, reading verses 25 to 34. And it says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O he of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 34. Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his word. It's such a beautiful reminder to us that God promised to take care of us. He says that we are to take no thought for our life because our life is in his hand so we are not supposed to get up every day worrying about what we are gonna eat what we're gonna wear or all of these things because the lord in his word promised us that he will take care of all our needs he said our bread and our water will be sure whatever form that bread and water will take he said that he will make the provision for us and interestingly about worrying do you realize that worrying never changed your situation it only makes you more stress in fact it can bring you to the point of sickness depression all because you are worrying about something that perhaps is even out of your control. And so here we are encouraged not to worry, not to put our minds on things that we can't control. Because the truth of the fact is you are worrying about tomorrow. There is no guarantee you are going to live out the rest of the day, the next moment. And so, we must put our trust in God who is able to sustain us. And he gives some examples. He said that, have you ever worried? And by worrying, it changed the situation for you. So you worry about your rent or your financial situation. You worry about sending your kids to school. You worry about putting food on the table. And it just appear out of nowhere? Of course not. That won't happen. 
that happen by trusting in God and having faith in him. And he gives some examples. He says that, look at the birds. The birds, they do not gather into barns. They do not plant. They do not have farms. They do not have storehouse. They do not have any of those things. But every single day, the birds eat. Look at that. And the Bible says that we are what? Even more valuable than the bird. We are more important than the bird. And so if we are more important than the bird and the Lord provides for the bird every day, how much more will he provide for you who is of value to him? Or more value, I should say. Because all God's creation is valuable. But he has a special interest in humans. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, don't put things on your head. Instead, the time you would use to worry, use that time to focus on God. He says that what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. When we seek him, then what? He will bless us accordingly. And then he went on to give another example by saying, The grass, when you look at the grass outside, every morning they are refreshed. The dew fall on them. And they are here today and tomorrow. The grass is gone. Because that's just their lifespan. They might get cut down tomorrow the trees might get cut down tomorrow the gardener might decide to come tomorrow and cut the grass so the grass lifespan is very limited and short but when you look at nature isn't nature beautiful when you look at the flowers when you look at the trees and the plants outside don't they look beautiful especially when they are in bloom of course they do but there's no lasting life for them today they can be here and tomorrow they can be gone but he said that not even Solomon the wisest man that ever lived was not a ray like one of these in all his splendor and all his wealth he can't come close to to them so we need to understand that God is telling us that, look here, if I have such high regards for nature, for my creation, how do you think I'm going to treat you? That's the question. Do you believe that God is going to allow you to starve? Do you think that God is going to allow you to get thrown out of your apartment? Do you believe that God is going to allow your children to starve? Or you can't send your children to school? Of course not. But you have to believe that He will provide for your needs. You hear what He says in verse 30? He says what? Because of our lack of faith, that is why a lot of time we can't reap the blessing that is already there. The blessing is already stored up for us, but we can't reap it because what? We don't have the key. And what is the key? Faith. Faith unlock heaven and pour out blessing upon you. So when you don't have any food, get on your knees and talk to God. When you need money to pay your rent and to send your children to school, get on your knee. Talk to God. And then believe, claim the blessing, claim the money, claim the financial aid, claim the food. I have heard of situations where persons have no food in their house and they put on the pot and they went on their knees and prayed. And before they were finished praying, they heard a knock at the door. Food come and they are able to put food in the pot. That's the level of faith that we need to have. No shabby, shabby faith. The Bible said that if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we can what? 
move mountain. And as I said, we are worrying about the things that we have no control over. And instead of worrying and worrying about all of these vanities that can make us vex sometime, we need to focus on our relationship with God. We need to draw closer to Him because when we seek Him and when we do His business, then our business will be well taken care of. And so that is why the, the, the last couple of verses says what? Seek ye first, what? God's kingdom and what? His righteousness. So we need to live righteously. And then what? God will bless us because He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Don't worry about tomorrow. You may never live to see tomorrow. And so, don't stress yourself worrying about something that you have no control over. When tomorrow come, the Lord will provide for you tomorrow. Amen? And so as we take this reading today, may we listen to the words of the Lord and may we accept them and may we apply them to our life. Because these are fruits of encouragement to us. To help us remain focused and not to become distracted because it's a it's all part of Satan's plan you know to keep you worrying about all of these things and when you are worrying you have no time to think about God so you see what is happening here so in your worrying you forget God and that's exactly what the devil wants so don't give him that satisfaction when you hit rock bottom as they would say Run in the arms of Jesus because he is your shelter in the time of storm. May God bless you and keep you and show you a favor. And may he provide for your today and your tomorrow in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.